So again, during Inglewood, California's elections for Districts 1 and 2, political materials were being inappropriately placed on public, private, and commercial properties without the owner's permission and in apparent violation of city codes. They were in bushes, on trees, on lamp posts or traffic signs. They were being left up months after an election, and they were hiding or confusing recognition of important street signs and fire hydrants. So I walk into a hamburger stand that has a big Judy Dunlap for City Council sign in the front window, and which is owned by someone who's been a friend of Dunlap's for over 20 years, and which has more framed pictures of Dunlap on the wall than of the president, and which is right across the street from Dunlap's campaign headquarters. So I buy some food, and while I'm waiting, I see some loose flyers for Dunlap's opponent, Alex Padilla, on top of a trash can. And I figure mistakenly that the flyers were snuck in there and put there without the owner's permission, just like so many other signs and flyers in the city, and I threw them away, only to have a campaign aide for Alex Padilla take them right back out of the can three seconds later and return them to right back where they were, undamaged, on top of the trash can. Now, Inglewood Today publisher Willie Brown also worked for Alex Padilla. Brown apparently tried to help his client Padilla win the election by lying, falsely connecting Judy Dunlap to what happened, and tried to help his other client, Mayor James Butts, by making up a story about me that was so bad that it would ruin my credibility when I spoke at city council meetings, describing how James Butts has consistently lied to and misled Inglewood's residents helped violate state law and endanger the safety of Inglewood's residents by hiding dangerous police misconduct in Inglewood. In his story, Brown lied and said that I worked for Dunlap, even though he knew I'd been critical of Dunlap and the rest of the council for over a year. And he lied about what happened. He said that I stole the flyers, ran out of the burger stand with them, destroyed them and threw them away somewhere outside. At the very beginning of his May 30th, 2013 story, Brown admits that he had the video from the burger stand, the same one I used in the story, when he wrote his story. Now in this story, I'm going to naturally assume that Brown actually watched the video before writing his story, which means that Brown had seen what actually happened at the burger stand, knew that what he was going to write were lies, but maliciously printed those lies anyway, to defame me and to help his clients, Alex Padilla and James Butts. Brown even told his lies on his webpage. Brown, who had seen the video and knew it wasn't true, told his readers that Padilla's aide said that I had, quote, ran out of the restaurant, unquote. The video proves that Willie Brown knowingly lied, and if Padilla's aide said I ran out, Padilla's aide lied too, because Padilla's aide was there, and Brown saw this video before he wrote the story. The video proves that after I put the flyers in the can and after Padilla's aide took them out, I walked to a booth and sat there for about two minutes. And when they called me for my food, Padilla's campaign aide got up, apparently talking on the phone with someone, and walks out. And it's important to note that the woman giving me my food there heard Padilla's aide say that I had thrown the flyers away saw him pull the flyers out of the can, and she never said anything to me about it. I also get up, get my food, and I walked, not ran, but walked, out to my car, where Padilla's campaign aide was waiting to take pictures of me driving away for the story. Another of Brown's lies was that I destroyed the flyers. Brown specifically said that I was responsible for the destruction of Padilla's flyers. When most people hear the word destruction, they think of how Webster's defines it. Webster says that to destroy something is to, quote, ruin the structure, or to ruin as if by tearing to shreds, or to put out of existence. Who could have looked at this video and honestly thought that I had destroyed the flyers, when it's clear that I merely placed them in the can and then they were immediately taken right back out the same way they were when they were put in. No one would have thought that. It's important to note two things. One, that Brown said Padilla's aide told Brown that I had ran out of the burger stand, which is a lie, and which Brown knew was a lie because he had the video. But Brown never told the public that Padilla's aide lied, most likely because that would be bad for his client, Padilla, so it would be bad for Brown's business. Instead, even though Brown had clear proof that Padilla's aide lied, he still printed that lie. 
Brown also didn't tell the public that Padilla's aide put the flyers back on top of the trash can undamaged three seconds later because that wouldn't be good for Brown's story. Brown lied and said that I stole the flyers, taking them with me and throwing them away outside somewhere. By saying that I took the flyers outside and away from the business, Brown tried to make what happened seem worse. Moving something 12 inches isn't stealing, but moving something 100 feet or more sounds more incriminating. But Brown knew the video showed that I never took anything anywhere. Brown had the video that showed that the flyers were never damaged and never left the trash can, but Brown lied and said the flyers were destroyed and that I took them outside. Brown used every trick in the book to try to deceive his readers. He even said for a certainty that he knew that I was missing council meetings because I was going around town getting rid of flyers. But Inglewood's own website shows what Willie Brown already knew. Brown's article was dated May 30th, and the city council canceled the meeting on May 28th, two days before Brown published the story, and the city council canceled the May 14th meeting as well. And Brown also knew that the two meetings in between those two canceled meetings were on May 21st at 1 o'clock and on May 23rd at 10.30 a.m. Both are meeting times that working people like me can rarely attend. And Brown had to know that in the nine weeks prior to Brown's article, the council canceled four meetings, and there were only two nighttime meetings for working people, the last being five weeks before Brown wrote his article. So at the next city council meeting after Brown wrote his article, I explained to the council what happened at the burger stand, and I objected to Inglewood today being paid by the city because of Brown's unethical conduct. Mr. Mayor, Council, my name is Joseph Tetsera, District 1. I'm asking this council to cut all financial ties to Willie Brown's newspaper, Inglewood Today, until Brown stops using lies in the very lowest, slimiest methods to write his stories. After the April election, Mayor Butts hypocritically attacked others for questioning the way the city clerk handled that election. Butts said that the city clerk threw him off the ballot when he was running for mayor and that he never said anything bad about it. However, I pointed out that the DVD of the July 20th, 2010 City Council meeting proved that then-candidate James Butts repeatedly accused City Clerk Yvonne Horton of lying, committing election fraud. But Willie Brown gets paid by James Butts, so when James Butts is caught red-handed being a hypocrite, lying, deceiving the public about something as serious as election fraud by the City Clerk, Willie Brown doesn't print any of that. But because I've proven beyond any doubt that James Butts has repeatedly lied to the public, has repeatedly helped violate the law, has helped violate people's civil rights, and has helped hide dangerous police misconduct that endangers all of Inglewood's residents, because I've done all that, when I throw away free flyers left on a trash can, Willie Brown personally concocts a story where he repeatedly lies about me to try to help his clients, Butts and Padilla. I also offered $500 if Willie Brown could come up with that video he said that supported his lies. And of course, right after me, Willie Brown spoke and told more lies. Even after I clearly explained what happened at the burger stand and exposed Brown's lies in the council meeting, Brown refused to admit that most of what he wrote about me was inaccurate and deceptive. He just kept lying. In his following week's paper, Brown said he had the proof and that he wouldn't print anything unless he could back it up. However, I knew for a fact that Brown was lying, so at the next council meeting, I again challenged his honesty and what he said in his story. Last week, I gave a perfect example of how Willie Brown misleads and manipulates his readers. I bought food at a burger stand owned by a man who said Judy Dunlap had been a friend of hers for over 20 years. He had a big Dunlap for Council sign in his window and four framed pictures on the wall of him, his family, and his friends all standing with Dunlap. I have told this council that I saw some loose flyers for Alex Padilla on top of a trash can inside the business and naturally believed that the owners didn't want them there, so I put them in that same trash can only to have a campaign aid for Alex Padilla take them out, not destroyed, but undamaged about three seconds later. I told this counselor that publisher Willie Brown heard about this and made up a whole different story, telling lie after lie after lie to his readers, including indicating that he had access to pictures and video that showed me, one, running out of the burger stand, two, taking the flyers with me, and three, then destroying them outside the building. But those are all lies. 
I went on to cite those same three lies later in my comments and again offered Brown $500 if he could prove what he told his readers. So again, I'm offering $500 if Willie Brown can prove what he told his readers, that I ran out of the burger stand, took the flyers with me, and destroyed them outside of the building. Now, it's very important to remember that Willie Brown spoke right after me that night. He had just a few seconds earlier heard my challenge, but he knew he was busted. He knew that out of an almost full-page story where he made almost a dozen allegations against me, the only thing that was true was that I put the flyers in the can for three seconds. So he knew he didn't have any video of me running or stealing or destroying or throwing anything away outside. So Willie Brown decided to lie. He decided to ignore my actual challenge and make up a challenge he thought he could actually meet. Now, what he did say was that he would pay $500 last week, and he said it again today, that if anyone could show pictures of him taking those flyers and putting them in the trash and, and chasing the joint to see if there were any cameras so he could create this act of thievery. As you can see, Willie Brown lies. But even if you weren't at the meeting and heard what I said, Brown's own writer, Veronica Mackey, contradicts Brown when she reports that I offered the $500 for video of any destruction of the mailer, which is at least one of the things I offered the money for. At the end of his comments at the June 25, 2013 council meeting, Brown didn't give me anything. He just held up some crumpled papers and said, And you will be able to go to Angle today with the newspaper and see the video. So Willie Brown put the only video he had on his website, and it proved that he had deliberately lied to his readers in his article. It didn't show me running out of the burger stand or taking the flyers with me or destroying the flyers or throwing them away outside somewhere, as he has said in his article. And Brown tried to hide the fact that the flyers weren't destroyed by putting a big arrow pointing to me saying, places items in the trash. But he didn't put a big arrow pointing to Padilla's aide saying, takes items back out of the trash, good as new, and puts them back where they were. And Brown was apparently going to try to defraud me out of $500 by claiming that he had met my challenge of proving that I had ran out of the burger stand, taken the flyers with me, destroyed them, and thrown them away outside somewhere, like he said in his article. Willie Brown and his staff even stooped so incredibly low as to deliberately mislead the public by actually removing words from the middle of my sentences to make me say what they wanted me to say. Sound impossible? Listen to what they put on their website. But that day, while I'm waiting for my food, I see some Alex Padilla flyers laying on top of a trash can. So I put them in that same trash can. But listen to what Willie Brown secretly removed. But that day, while I'm waiting for my food, I see some Alex Padilla flyers laying on top of a trash can. And I figured there's no way these owners allowed that. They must have been snuck there. So I put them in that same trash can. No honest writer, journalist, or publisher takes 18 words out of the middle of anyone's written or audio sentences without in some obvious way informing their readers or listeners that it's being done. I believe that the city of Inglewood should not give hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars to a paper and a publisher that not only hide important facts from those taxpayers about the problems in our city and with our elected officials, but also deliberately use lies, deception, and trickery to mislead and manipulate those same taxpayers just to get money and earn political favors. When you read a story or look at a video or listen to an audio clip created by Inglewood Today, Please remember that Willie Brown and this paper have no problem hiding the facts they don't want you to know and making up lies to manipulate you.